Hello everybody, today we're going to do a move ambush hand buff variant of Anya. Like last time, we're going to have our Elven Mercenaries First Lights and Saskia, but we're going to remove Barkley Elves and Marching Orders for the core cards here because we need more silver slots to fit in the other two variants that we're adding in here. The two sets we're adding in here. Now we're going to add in the movement core set. This isn't going to change from last time. We have the Blue Mountain Commandos, Sheldon Skaggs, Zoltan, and a Azur's Double Cross. The Azur's Double Cross helps us pull Sheldon Skaggs. And so it's, since we don't have as much emphasis on deck thinning, we kind of need that. Okay, and then we add in the Ambush cards. You see that this takes up three silver slots. Teruvial, Morin, Illyrian. Illyrian is our bamboozling card that we combo off of Teruvial. We have Isengrim as our gold card added here, and he's really powerful. He's like an 18 strength gold with Morin. Moving a little bit further, we're going to add in the hand buffing cards, and these are five cards. We have Bran, which is our end game finisher, our uh, three dragoons and three supports. Finally, we're going to add some tech cards. We have Shiru. Shiru is going to give us an extra silver spell to use with Enya. It's really good against dwarfs because then you can start scorching their stuff and you don't have to focus too much on shrooming things. It is important against dwarfs that you don't use the scorch until they're done with buffing stuff or that they've passed around. You want to have card advantage and you want to be scorching junk. Uh, the shrooms. Again, pretty self-explanatory. There's lots of buffing here. It's good against Neckers. It's good against Grave Hag. Uh, and Lacerate, really good against Arrakis that your consumed players are going to spam on the board. Without further ado, we're going to get into some games. We're going to do two casual games and one ranked game. And we're going to play against several different factions with different strategies. We're also going to look at what happens when you have a bad hand and how to handle that. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the game. Our first game is up against a Calve player. Against Calve, you're going to have to try to deal with cow carcasses and lots of tempo. If you can beat them in round one, you can beat them in the game. So here I have the perfect hand for the movement set and I can counter the cow carcasses like this. My opponent placed two cow carcasses, and here I'm, I'm going to slow it down because I made a misplay. I should have moved my other opponent's uh, cow carcass into the melee uh, ranged row, and it would have they would have killed each other, which would have saved me a lot of trouble. Sometimes I make mistakes. <laughs> here I wanted to pass for the bamboozle. However, they played a third cow carcass, and so I had to deal with that. Had I know this, known this round would go on so long, I wouldn't have... I would have played the Dragoons sooner. I continue to thin my deck. My goal here is to remove all my opponent's win conditions. Because I have a sense that they are... They're continuing this round for a reason, other than card advantage. Now, that Dragoon protects me from Ignis, which is great. I can still win. But it's going to cost me a lot more card advantage to do so. However, it behooves me to win this round. Not only does towing on extra give me more Dragoon buffs, it helps me into the later rounds. I'm going to keep my hand and just pass, get more card advantage this way. I have a good sense that my opponent has a Peter, so I'm going to have to play around that. I push out the Brand because I know that my Azure's Double Cross will always pull it. And I have a great chance of pulling really good cards if I'm careful. I don't turn that into a Scorch because I'm not afraid that I will have to Scorch. My opponent uses decoy quite effectively, and right here my opponent made a huge mistake. They buffed up their uh, spheres, and that cost them dearly. 
In the end, I won the game, but had they done that, we would have drawn because it would have been a six differential if he had used Peter on my unit instead of his own, which is a sign that of a, good, a good player uh, deals damage to their opponent more often than they buff their own side because if you buff your own side, you make yourself open to damage. Uh, uh, now we're going to move on to the next game. Now we're up against a Skellige player. This will also showcase how you handle a bad hand. Sometimes you're just going to have to deal with having to win round one with not the happiest hand. I decided to put in a Scorch in my hand this time with Shiru. Lacerate I didn't think was going to be as effective, but I should have kept the Lacerate now that I think about it. I should have seen whether or not my opponent was a Queen's Guard deck or a uh, discard deck. Apparently they're a Queen's Guard deck. I also feel bad that I didn't put the Morin down sooner. Getting your Morin down can really counter things like, oh, I'm going to play my Queen's Guard and then it gets killed and then they have to waste to serve up, revive on it. Luckily my Morin does hit something valuable, the Shieldsmith. I'm just hoping my opponent plays more cards for my to hit the uh, like t another bear for my scorch to hit, but didn't work out. Instead, he just revived it. I'm kind of I really want to win this round because I do got dragoon buffs going on to the next round, and I pulled out two of his priestess of Freya already. I bait out the Geralt Igni, which is great, and I don't really need to play anymore. If he had played the Geralt Igni earlier, I would have probably passed. Now in the second round, he just passed. I pull out Sheldon's Gags because I'm not going to really use them later. I push out Teruvial because I'm going to be using Isengrim on that. Some revive card, but he used all of them in round one, which was why he lost. Well, you can win with a bad hand. And you can also notice that Coral is particularly weak against this deck while she's really strong against Dwarf and Consume. So this deck has some of the, lacks some of the weaknesses that Dwarf variant has. On to the next game. This will be our last game. It's up against, it's ranked and it's up against a Consume monster deck, which is probably what you're going to see most in rank. We fortunately got a really good hand. I know it has no gold cards in it, but that's not necessary. We have enough deck thinning, we can live against that. I'm going to put all the stuff into the siege row. This is weak against Lacerate, but I'm not seeing as many water hags as I've previously seen. Partly because the monsters have a really <sighs> tight silver slots with the crones. I pull out the Sheldon Skags. It gives me a lot of tempo. I'm going to take a risk here that my opponent doesn't play any cards. Uh, after I pass. I'm gonna make them think that they're way ahead. And I'm just gonna pass. Part The good thing about this is that it reduces the number of cards that go into my opponent's graveyard for Grave Hag. So I win the round with a Bamboozle. My opponent says, Argh! like every good Immolarith player. You might think, why am I spending time using cards now I could have uh, probably played Dragoon first here, but I didn't. My goal here really is to um, ba uh, get some card advantage. Not much else. I use the Shrooms here. The Shrooms will be replayed with Enya later. Now that I am ahead of my opponent, I'm just going to pass. There's no reason to push pull out this round with Dragoon Lock like this. The leader ability actually saves me a lot of trouble because it means my removal is stronger. Okay, I'm not going to mulligan anything because I don't want to get Saskia. It's very important that I my Saskia survive. Morin's really strong, but I'm, I'm worried. I'm going to get rid of the Arrakis Behemoth because I already have a answer to Grave Hag with Enya here. I could have played Morin later. It's another thing I could have done. Yes, I get Scorch, but I have two card advantage on my opponent. 
due to the nature of the bamboozle, and that's how you can win a ranked game with this deck. I know it seems a little weird, that was very risky of me to do that, but the bamboozle's all about a risk factor. Does your opponent expect it? If they don't, then you got a really strong counter. If they lock Trubial, that's a problem, but again, we can survive that. Well, that's the last game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you did. Give me a comment if you have some questions about budget decisions. I know I didn't talk a lot about that in the beginning of the game. Regardless, have a good day. Bye.